Hello everybody! Today we have a video for all skydivers and students alike. We're going to talk about the three ring release system. Now, we're not really going to explain how it works. That is best done at the drop zone with a real rig in front of you and with an instructor or a rigger. What you have here is a quick reference on a demonstration on how the three ring release system works. And we're going to look at it from the rear and from the front of the three ring. And then we'll talk about and demonstrate the three most common miss rigs that you can find on a three ring release system. So here we have the back side of the three ring. Let's see what happened as we pull the cutter cable. The cutter cable is getting pulled. There we go. So now the riser is free from the housing. And then this is going to simply release. So this is the view on the back side. Okay, now on the front side. So now you're pulling the cutaway cable. There we go, it just released. And now what will happen next? One, two, three. All right, so now that we have the perfect example, we have the perfect view in mind, let's look at the three most common miss rig scenarios. The first one is going to be a miss rig of the RSL shackle. The second one, it's going to be an actual miss routing of the actual ring on the front. And then the third one, it's gonna be a miss routing of the cutaway cable on the back side of the three ring release system. Now let's see one of those three mystery scenarios. So in this case, you can see what's wrong already. The RSL, it's not attached to its proper side ring, but it's attached to the middle ring. So what is going to happen once we cut away? Let's pull our cutaway handle. The cutaway housing is disengaged. The riser is getting pulled. One, two. And then somewhere right here, this is now totally locked, okay? So this would actually cause, you see that there, a main and reserve entanglement. Pretty bad, pretty bad story. You would also have pretty much the same similar scenario, not exactly the same, if your RSL was attached to the big ring. What can happen is that now, as your riser releases, it's going to lock in this position. So to recap, we want to make sure that our RSL shackle, it is always attached to the side ring right here. If for whatever reason that skydiver, that licensed skydiver does not want to do the RSL, what you'll see people do is they're going to attach it on the cutaway housing right here, which is all good. Or you will see them, maybe some of them kind of shoving it into the mud flap, which is, again, okay, quote unquote. If we are using the RSL, we always want to have it on the side rig. Now, what we have in this scenario, the RSL here is properly routed, but the issue that we see here on this side is that the through loop is going through both the small and the medium ring. What we see on this side is that both the small and the medium ring are going through the big ring. What this is going to do, this is going to have more force on your cutaway handle. So hopefully, ideally, technically, it is not going to hinder the function it is just gonna be much more harder to pull the cutaway handle. But let's see, so I'm pulling the cutaway handle and there is already a little bit more strength with no suspended weight, I can feel that it's just a little bit harder to pull. One of them has released. I've pulled the cutaway handle all the way and let's see, 
Is this going to release? Yep, that released. And this released also. Okay, so it's definitely something you do not want to see that you want to check for. But the effect is that you'll have a greater pull force on your cutaway hand. Now the third scenario is a misrouting of the cutaway cable housing. So as you can see here, the through loop, the through loop, it is not going through the cutaway cable housing at all. The canopy release system is probably going to work as expected. However, the issue with this, what could happen as you turn left and right, as you move your toggle and your hand up and down, or as you look left and right, you could snag the cutaway cable housing. And this could happen at whatever, 300 feet and whatnot. So this is why we always want to engage the cutaway cable housing. And that's the consequences of not doing that. And that's it. So hopefully after this video, you have a better idea of how that system actually works and you have a better idea of what to look for when you're checking your three ring or someone else's or your students three ring release system. Mm -hmm.